later on in life, we we had these uh, what I call them our convicts. As Daddy looked for uh, people who worked on the farm, uh, Mama wanted somebody to help her around the house so she could work in the garden. So Daddy had a friend named Frank Thomas that was the head jailer at uh, Tennessee Penitentiary in Nashville. So Daddy would go down and meet with Frank, and Frank had a big old long walking stick. They'd walk through the penitentiary, and he'd say, Bill, now what kind of prisoner do you want? And Daddy said, I just want somebody who doesn't steal or rob. Well, in the penitentiary, I don't usually leave somebody to kill somebody. So the first one we had was Helen. And Helen was this woman that supposedly had killed these two people in Memphis. This is what she told him. She said, it was all self-defense, Mr. Bill. said, uh, And she talked like this. She just barely could whisper. She said that she was coming out of a movie in Memphis one night, and this man jumped her and had her down on the ground choking her to death. And she said, I got a hold of a knife somewhere. And said, I started stabbing him in the chest. And he rolled off of me. And then I pulled that knife out and I threw it as this woman took off running and I hit her in the back and she fell over. And then she died later because the knife punctured her lung and she died of pneumonia and that. And Daddy said, you mean that was self-defense when you threw that knife and hit that woman in the back? She said, yes, it was self-defense. But anyway, Helen stayed with us for a year. She looked after me like a mother hen. I mean, she loved me to death. She'd do anything for me. She took good care of me and for a year, and then she left. And six months after she left us, she had, you know, been real good, got her parole almost. She went to work for a doctor in Nashville, and he was just mean, hateful, they said, just real rascal. And uh, she stabbed him in the back with an ice pick and killed him. So I guess Helen went back to pen for the rest of her life. I don't know. Well, then the next guy we got was Clemens Pitts. And Clemens Pitts was a black guy from Fayetteville, Tennessee. He'd shot these two black guys in a crap game, and they'd damn down there. Well, Daddy went back to Frank Thomas, the head jailer down there at the Tennessee prison, and got Clemens out. And Clemens, of course, hadn't stolen or robbed anything. And we had him there on the farm, and he was working. And, and uh, I was, you know, always a little nervous around Clemens. He and I were just up on the farm by ourselves. Mom and Daddy still lived in town. So I was up on the farm with just Clemens. And one day I told I said, Clemens, hop up in the loft there and get me a, a rope. We need the, I forget what I wanted the rope for. And he said, I ain't getting up there and get a rope. You get up there and get the rope yourself. And I said, get up there and get the damn rope, Clemens. And he reached in his pocket and I knew he carried a pretty good sized knife. And there was a pitchfork laying down there in the hallway of the barn. And I picked that pitchfork up and I put it right up against his throat, and I said, Clemens, if you come out of your pocket with anything besides an empty hand, I'm gonna nail your damn body to the side of this barn. And he pulled his hand out, his empty, and he said, ah, oh, Mr. Tom, I just tease him. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do nothing. I just tease him. Said, uh, but so from then on, he and I got along fine. The only other thing I really did bad that I always hated is he and I were cutting locust fence posts back up on the back up in the head of the hollow up there, and the fence posts were all oh, they were they were this big around and and have a chainsaw. We had a crosscut saw and we were sawing them down and and locusts is hard as rock almost and we we were sawing them up in seven foot sections to make fence posts out of. You put three feet in the ground, you'd have four feet or above ground for to put the fence on. So we tried to get this saw started on this on this trying to, and it kept on hopping. It hop, 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 like that. So Clemens, for some reason, put his hand up there to guide the saw, and it jumped, and I, we cut his finger off right there. And I, of course, wrapped something around it and had to take him down off the, down off of there and take him into town, get his, get his hand all doctored up, but I cut his finger off. I always hated that. But then after a year, Clemens left us, and, and then we were still living in town, and uh, Mama wanted somebody to help around the house there, so Daddy went down there and got Catherine. Well, Catherine was this huge black lady. I mean, huge black woman, real dark black lady, but she had these huge black gross all over her face, like warts or something, 
and they were huge, like in big as in the thing, and she was really, really mean looking. Boy, she was in the penitentiary for her. She had an invalid husband, and she got mad at him one day, and she picked him up and threw him off this high porch and broke his neck and killed him. Well, that's what she was in there for, so that's how we ended up with Catherine. So Catherine was there at the house, and she kept on getting in Daddy's whiskey. And she had drank a little drink of whiskey, and then she put that much water in his bottle. Well, Daddy being a connoisseur of whiskey he was, he always knew what, you know, that something happened to his whiskey. He could always tell. And so uh, he told us, Catherine, you get my whiskey anymore, and I'm going to send your ass back to the penitentiary. So one day she was there with Mama, just the two of them there at the house by themselves, and she came in there, and Mama smelled whiskey on her breath, and she said, Catherine, you've been in Bill's whiskey again. And says, I'm going to tell him, and he'll send you back to the penitentiary. Well, when he did that, Catherine reached in the kitchen drawer and pulled out a big, long butcher knife. And she looks at Mama, and she said, you know, Miss Neils, says, when you kills once, you don't mind killing again. And she took that after Mama. Well, Mama used to be real quick on her feet and everything after working all those years in the garden and everything. So she ran through that big house there in, in Carthage and slamming the doors behind her. And she went over next door to Uncle Clint's and called J.D. Rollins, the sheriff. And so J.D. knew who Catherine was. He knew he, she was a handful. So J.D. came out together and brought two deputies with him. So he came out there and he said, come on, Catherine, let's go. And Catherine says, I ain't going, Mr. J.D. And he said, come on, Catherine, I mean, let's go. So she got to the back porch of the house there where we lived there on Jackson Avenue. And the back porch had a screened-in porch with a post on either side going on the back. So Catherine got there and she reached out and she grabbed the post on either side. She said, Mr. J.D., I ain't going no further. And he said, Catherine, I'm telling you one time, let's go. And she said, I ain't going. So he pulled a slapjack. Now a slapjack, you know what a black blackjack is? It's round and got lead in it. Well, a slapjack is flat with lead in it. So he brought that slapjack and he hit her twice, right across the end, right across her nose. Blood just went everywhere. Catherine dropped her hands. She walked out and she went and got into JD's car and headed back to the penitentiary and that's the last we ever saw of her. So then the last one we had was Albert. Now Albert was living up to the farm and, uh, and so uh, one night, Uncle George Harville, who lived on the next farm there next to us, uh, you know, Uncle George was the, was the father of Leonard Harville. Uh, Uncle George woke up one night, and Albert was standing at the foot of his bed going through Uncle George's pants. So Uncle George had a pistol, and he held a pistol on him. Good thing he didn't shoot him, I guess. And so they arrested him and took sent Albert back. So that was the last of our convicts. We had... Uh, we had quite an assortment of